keeping a consistent devotional life of Bible study and prayer is one of the most important tasks as a Christian. And yet, it can be one of the most difficult to maintain. Why? Because sometimes you start out well, making promises about how long you're going to spend in prayer, how many chapters a day you're going to read, but then two months down the road, you find yourself being inconsistent and you can't explain what happened. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you seven things that could possibly interfere with or interrupt your devotional life or the consistency of your devotional life. These are not things that you can necessarily avoid, but you can look out for them and make sure that they do not interrupt or interfere with your devotional life as they usually do. I am Damien Chambers and this is your Devotional Digest. On this channel, we create content that will help you to grow spiritually by strengthening your devotional life. If you are just joining us for the first time, please feel free to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and so you can be prompted for more content as we create it. Thanks for joining and welcome. The first type of situation that can interfere with your devotional life is what I refer to as a crisis situation. A crisis is defined as a time of intense problems. Such problems can interfere with the normal operation of your life. For example, illness, job loss, natural disaster, a divorce, or the death of a loved one. These situations, especially because they normally lead to de depression, often force you to stop praying. I have done an entire video on praying through a crisis. One of the advice I give is that you must not give up on your devotional routine. Based upon the story of Job, and especially Job chapter 23, I share that this is the time you need to pray the most. The second type of situation that can interfere with your devotional life is when you move to a different location to live, whether permanently or temporarily. You could temporarily mean you could go and be on a vacation with family members. Now, the reason for this is that when you move to live somewhere else, you normally lose that secluded place or spot or that quiet place that you normally have in, in your own comfort zone. The solution for this is that you can immediately, when you, once you move, identify another secluded place or you do like Jesus. Jesus would wake up early in the morning, earlier when everybody else is asleep so that you can have that quiet time or that quiet place with God. Don't yield to the temptation of telling yourself that, boy, this is only for a time and you're gonna, when you get back home, you're going to continue praying. No, these are decisions that usually cause permanent interference in your devotional life. A third situation that usually interfere with your devotional life is when major changes take place in your life. This is not like moving to a different location. What I'm talking about are major changes that include more responsibilities. For example, a new spouse, you got married, a new child, you're just having children for the first time, or a second child or a third child, a new job, a promotion at the workplace. These things mean more responsibility and therefore takes up more of your time and mental capacity. It usually put more strain on you and sometimes the first thing to go is your prayer life. But the truth is, your prayer life is needed even more. It is, it is time for you to even pray, to, to pray even more. So your prayer life is needed more, the more responsibility you take on. So don't let more responsibility squeeze out your prayer life. The fourth situation that can cause interference to your prayer life is unforgiveness. Why? Because prayer is about relationship with God. And based upon what the Bible teaches, there can be no consistent relationship with God where there is brokenness with your fellow men. How can you love God and hate your brother at the same time the Apostle John asked? And so you'll find that there are several places in Scripture where the Bible clearly states the connection between your relationship with God and your forgiveness of others. In Matthew chapter 6 
and verse 14 at the end of the Lord's Prayer what we know as the Lord's Prayer Jesus said for if you forgive people their wrongdoing your Heavenly Father will forgive you as well but if you don't forgive people your father will not forgive your wrongdoing and so we should pray forgive us our debts forgive us our transgressions as much as we forgive others in first peter chapter 3 and verse 7 as well the apostle peter speaks about the importance of a husband living at peace with his wife except his prayer be hindered and so you find that also in matthew chapter 5 verse when about verse 23 to 25 jesus says if you bring your gift to the altar and remember that you have ought against a brother or a brother of ought against you you must leave your gift and first go and reconcile with your brother and then come and offer your gift so forgiveness is important is deeply connected with your worship of god and the temptation is that we often you know because it's a difficult thing to reconcile let me admit it up front i did an entire video on how to forgive and i did another one on how to deal with difficult people but the temptation is to neglect forgiving others or reconciling with others and this usually prolong the time we take to restore that broken relationship with god and then by the time you know it you stop praying you're out of the church and stuff like that the solution is to promptly deal with issues the, 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 the bible gives guidance on this and said that you must not let the sun go down on your anger and so it's important that you learn to forgive and be kind towards others as god is forgiving towards you a fifth situation that can interfere with your devotional life is sin or sinful habits or sinful practices in the psalm 66 verse 18 the psalmist says if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And Proverbs 28 verse 13 says that whoever covereth his sins shall not prosper, but who can also confess and forsake them shall have mercy. You see, sin produces shame, shame produces pride, and pride keeps us from going to God. And the longer we stay away from God, the more distance is created with Him, and the easier it is for us to stay away. The solution is that we need to confess in Isaiah 1 verse 16 to 18 God says come let us reason together say the Lord though your sins be as scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they be red as crimson they shall be as wool God is ready to forgive if we confess our sins don't stay away from him don't let shame or pride keep you away draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh unto you the sixth situation that can interfere with your prayer life is what I call competing interests these are innocent things things that are not bad in themselves but they can interfere with your prayer life for example sports social media scrolling movies um, conversation with friends video games and stuff like that sometimes it's just a matter of conflicting time you know you get up five o'clock in the morning to watch that cricket match or that football match and then you forget to pray you know you you spend time in conversation with your friends who you didn't see for a long time and then your prayer time pass or you neglect to pray you know the, the solution to this problem is that you have to make your prayer life a, a priority and if you want to know how to make your prayer life a priority think about daniel the fact that he was all he was asked to do was to stop praying for 30 days daniel would rather go into a lion's den and be killed than to remain alive and not pray so you need to you need to understand how important prayer your prayer life is and realize that though these things are are nice things don't give them priority above your prayer life i i did an entire video on social media and your prayer life i think the title of the video is is social media draining your prayer life you can watch that video and get some tips on how to manage social media to ensure it does not drain your prayer life the final situation that can interfere with your prayer life is simply forgetfulness or neglect or procrastination that is sometimes we just decide not to be prompt 
in, in, in giving our time to prayer and Bible study. Sometimes we say to ourselves, okay, listen, I, I'm, it's early, I'm rushing out, I'm going to pray when I get to work. And then you forget to pray, and then the entire day comes to an end and you don't pray or read the Bible. And then the next day it comes again and so on. We need to understand, as one author puts it this way, prayer would be an easy matter if there wasn't a devil. The devil knows how powerful and how strong you are when you pray and read your Bible. And so he will do every and anything to get you ne to neglect that special time of prayer. Watch my video on how to improve your prayer life and I'll give you tips on how to make prayer a priority in your life. So prayer and Bible study, as I said before, is one of the most important habits as a Christian to help you to be successful in growing up in Christ and to become a mature Christian. Do not allow anything to neglect or to cause you to neglect or hinder your consistency in your relationship with God. Make him priority, remain connected with him, and by God's grace, he will accomplish the purpose for which he, have, he has called you. Thank you so much for watching and for tuning into this video. As I said, if you have not yet done so, please subscribe to the channel so you can be alerted on more videos that I'll be producing on how to help you to grow spiritually. God bless you and thank you for watching.